given into this. And probobutyl. Well, I mean, and probobutanamine. Two. Uh. Yeah, we don't want to forget this locator. That's good. I think it would probably would definitely help here to number the parent chain to help us see what we're doing. So the amine is on the number two carbon, and then the propyl is on the nitrogen. Why is this the parent chain? Because it's the longer one. And propyl to butanamine. Good. Let's try naming this. Close. So you both said 2-butanamine. Now we have to be clear in our minds that now there are two substituents. This substituent and this substituent. Uh, so we have to name this ethyl substituent and we need to say where it is. And then we need to name the other substituent and say where it is. is well put, yes. And is really acting just like a number normally would. These numbers are what are called locators. Well, instead of using a number as a locator, we're using the end. So we're, you're, you're absolutely right. We're going to treat the end just like a numeric locator. So it looked like your first instinct was just to call this N ethyl methyl and put those two things together. But that would be something like this, uh, where there was a methyl group on the ethyl group. That would indicate a branch substituent. Mm -hmm. The only way to show that there's actually two separate substituents is two separate locators. So if there was that methyl group on the ethyl, yeah. then it would be like N, and then in parentheses, 2-methyl, ethyl, and then N-methyl. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not sure that I, I get a little confused now. But um, yeah, so if, we'll write that. Is the where you just erased it from? Yes, okay. Then it would be N. And then in parentheses, 2-methyl, ethyl, no, because, oh, okay, so yeah, 1-methyl, ethyl, and methyl 2 butanamine. Yeah, that sounds good. if there was, uh, 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 let, let's get to that in one second. Now, um, or, or let's put it this way. These would both be acceptable names in this case. This is the name that I think you actually used. This is the name that you used. In this case, we can simplify a little. We don't need to say that the methyl is on the number one carbon, because that's the only place it could be. If the methyl is on the new, number two carbon, this would just be a propyl. So if you say methyl ethyl without parentheses, it does automatically mean that the methyl is on the ethyl group, and it's that's not right. attached to the end. That's right. Because if it was attached separately, it would have its own locator, like we have down here. That was the reason why our first answer down here was wrong 
because down here, the methyl was not on the ethyl, and we were still blurring those two words together. So in this case, the two substituents are separate, and therefore they should have separate locators. Whereas up here, in this case, at least here, there's a methyl on the ethyl. So they should both come after the single locator over here. So those, those things can get a little bit subtle. Now, when you, have, uh, when you have to use a number for a substituent, that's when it's very important to put it in parentheses to try to make things a little bit less confusing. If you don't actually put this number in, though, then you probably don't need the parentheses. So if it was like, like what, if it was like, if this was a propyl group, then you would definitely need the number over yeah. here, because then that methyl could have been on the number one or the number two. So in that case, this would be uh, two methyl propyl, say. Okay. So then you would definitely want to put it in these parentheses. Okay. So when do we use parentheses? When we need to use numbers not just for the parent chain, but also for a substituent. Okay. A number inside the parenthesis indicates that it refers to a substituent, right. and a number outside parentheses indicates that it refers to the, the main chain. Okay, so just. Yeah, so there are definitely some subtleties there. You definitely want to do um, some practice problems because uh, th th there are some tricks that uh, we can run into down here. But the most important thing is separate substituents should have separate locators, like we have down here. Let's give a name to this. One thing that's always a good idea to do is number the parent chain. I think you might have started your numbering here, but that would be a mistake because this is a nitrogen, not a carbon. So it is definitely a good idea to number the parent chain, but this is not a carbon. This is the nitrogen. So this is the first carbon over here. So this is not pent, but butte. Butte and amine. And I think you guys, did you guys remember to put in the number one here? It's easy to forget the one, but we need that locator. Uh, and then we have N ethyl. N propyl. Now, we don't want to say N ethyl propyl, because that would make it seem like a branch substituent. These are two separate substituents. So we need locators for each substituent and for the amine group as well. By the way, I think technically these should be in alphabetical order. So the ethyl should come first and then the propyl. First the ethyl, then the propyl. I don't know, some instructors aren't picky about that, but technically you should put things in alphabetical order. Number your parent chain, that's always a good idea. Let's put in some actual numbers. There you go. Okay. 
Sorry, I put in a, a, a evil trap here. The trap is to trick people into thinking that this is the parent chain. Um, but this is not the longest possible chain. We should pick the longest possible chain, and the longest possible chain is here. This is a trap that a lot of instructors like. You can't assume that the horizontal is the longest chain. Don't assume that the horizontal is the longest chain. It's always a good idea to actually number your parent chain. All right, and then we have a lot of work to do to put this together.